I've got a WPF application here. You'll notice that it's got three text boxes, just standard text boxes, nothing special about them. But when we execute the application and we run a tablet PC, you'll notice that I can click on the text box and it'll give me the option to open a text input panel where I can write in some text and it'll analyze it. And then once I'm sure it's correct, I can click input. It's a little bit of a hassle though, because I have to click the icon. I have to then input my text in a separate box, then click insert, then close the text panel. So I think that we can do better simply by taking advantage of an ink analysis API that's available in managed code. So in the XAML, I'm going to go find those text boxes. I'm actually going to be replacing those with a grid and some other content. So first I'll paste in a grid that already has some properties set and I'm going to surround that text box with a grid, get rid of the second and third text boxes. And now I'm going to fix up the text box. Don't need the, uh, those grid settings. We're going to make it a text block instead of a text box. And I'm going to give it a name. Next, I'm going to create an entity of type ink canvas, right? So this gives you a lot of built-in functionality with respect to ink. So I'll give it a name, a width, and a height. I'm going to set its background color so we can tell where the canvas is. It's always nice for the user to be able to see where they're going to write. I'm also going to add an event handler for the lost focus event. I'm going to go back and add an event handler for the text block as well for its stylus down event handler. Now you'll remember that we had uh, three text boxes, so I'm going to create three copies of that whole uh, set of elements. So three grids inside of which are three text blocks and three ink canvases. And I'm going to fix up the names here as well, just so they all have unique names. Now I'm going to go to the code behind file. And the first thing I'm going to do here is add a using statement. So I'll go to the top, add a using statement for system.windows.ink. And then go back down to the event handler. And let's implement lost focus first. So I'm going to retrieve the ink canvas. And I can just retrieve that because I know it's the sender of the event. We'll check to make sure that its strokes property is not null and not empty because there's no point in doing analysis if there's no ink to analyze. Next, I'm going to retrieve the grid uh, that contains the ink canvas because once I have the grid, I can retrieve the text block. And I want to access both the ink canvas and the text block in this case. All right, now I want to create an object of type ink analyzer, but you'll notice that it doesn't appear there. That's because it does not ship with .NET, but rather it ships with the tablet PC uh, SDK, which of course is included in tablet PCs. So in order to be able to get to that, I need to navigate out to program files and then look for reference assemblies. I'm looking for Microsoft tablet PC, I want v1.7 and I'm looking for that iawinfx.dll. Right, so that's the DLL I need. Go ahead and select that. Now, if I was to use Ink Analyzer at this point, I'd run into a problem uh, that at runtime it would complain that the that DLL was compiled against version 1.0 of .NET and we're in 4.0 and so I need to add this, this um, property use legacy v2 runtime activation policy set that to true in app.config and that'll prevent that error from happening at runtime all right back to the code where i'm now able to uh, uncomment out and see automatically it's able to find ink analyzer so we'll create an instance of ink analyzer we'll go ahead and add all of the strokes from the ink canvas to our analyzer and then here's where we actually do the ink analysis. We simply call the analyze method. Now it, it 
returns a status that we can check to see if it's successful. And if it is successful, then we simply set the text blocks text property to be equal to the recognized string that we got from the analysis process. Just a quick UI change here to swap the visibility of the text block and the ink canvas. Make the text block visible, the ink canvas uh, collapsed or invisible, and that's it. Uh, now, for, as far as the stylus down, uh, nothing in here really has to do with ink analysis. So really quickly, we'll just add the code. It's sort of the reverse of the analysis process in which, in this case, we're retrieving the ink canvas and we're going to clear the strokes. We're going to make the ink canvas visible and the text block invisible or collapsed. Looks like we missed a closing bracket. We'll fix that, rebuild, and let's try out the application. So now we don't need to display the text input panel. We can just go right to the area next to our name and start writing. And then when we navigate away, so in other words, when that ink canvas loses focus, it'll perform the analysis and you can see that automatically it'll just replace it with the corrected text, or rather the, the nice version of the text. And there we have ink analysis in C-sharp and WPF4 in Windows 7.